Coming up on CTV, the Lori Student Center gets a few more windows. And next, the 18-year-old genius girl working on her doctorate here at CSU. And later, the smoking ban that could hit close to home. All that and more, you're watching CTV News. Hello and welcome to CTV News on this Tuesday, February 12th. I'm Lena Howland. And I'm Keith Albertson. If you've been walking around campus, you might have witnessed the LSC being torn down Tuesday. Construction crews made their first dent in the renovation project by tearing down one of the south walls of the LSC. The much anticipated renovations are underway and are expected to be completed by the fall semester of 2014. The renovations are basically designed to improve the building's infrastructure and organize student programs and services. The bookstore, theater, transit center, and north meeting rooms will still remain available. Students here at CSU might have been surprised this week to see that the stone sign bearing our school's name has been almost completely pulverized. Located on Pitkin and Shields, the sign was hit by a car that slid on ice Saturday evening sometime between 6 and 7 p.m. No one was injured. The sign will be fixed, but the timeline and cost is still undetermined. Locals here in Fort Collins may be in an uproar tonight. An oil and gas well continues to blast greenish-tinted fracking fluid across a drilling site, uncomfortably close to residencies. The incident occurred about four miles southeast of Harmony Road and I-25. The problem was caused by a mechanical failure at the drilling site Monday morning and has been going on since then. No one has been reported hurt. Authorities say there is no threat of an explosion and have no estimate of when the fluid will be contained. North Korea could be facing some serious sanctions after conducting a nuclear test on its own soil. This is a defiant response to UN orders to shut down the pursuit of weapons of mass destruction. North Korea claims it has the right to build nuclear weapons as a defense against the United States. The test came just hours before President Obama gave his State of the Union address. For an in-depth analysis of Obama's State of the Union address, we have CTV reporter Jackie Rickard here in the Information Center. Jackie? Thanks, Lena. In the first State of the Union address of his second term, the president discussed a number of hot topic issues. He mentioned stressing the need for spending on manufacturing and infrastructure to create jobs. He also announced plans to withdraw 34,000 troops from Afghanistan within the next year. Issues currently brought to light from the events like the Newton School shooting and North Korea's nuclear tests were also addressed, including problems of national security and gun violence. Obama proposed a ban on only certain weapons, but proposed broader, more universal background checks on gun purchases. As for North Korea, Obama made the case that nuclear program is only going to further isolate their impoverished nation. Despite pressing foreign policy concerns, the economy remains the top priority for many Americans, a potential vulnerability for the president as he seeks to pursue other second-term priorities. To check out the Republicans' response to the president's address, go to our website at ctv11news.com. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up on CTV, I sat down with an 18-year-old genius in her second year of CSU's doctorate program. And later, I went down to CU Boulder. The on-campus smoking ban that's causing controversy at CU could be coming to CSU in the near future. Don't go away. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Solving real world problems is a hallmark of research at Colorado State University. The Engines and Energy Conversion Lab at CSU is committed to meeting the global energy challenges of the 21st century. Developing countries use our clean burning wood stoves, giving them safe and sustainable technology, helping to reduce indoor air pollution and improving the quality of lives. Colorado State University Research. Local discovery, global impact. Welcome back from the break. It's definitely been pretty cold these last couple of days, 
We saw a high of 45 degrees today, but it certainly didn't feel that way. Currently, temperatures are in the upper 20s and winds are calm. Moisture has been pretty scarce lately. Taking a look at the map behind me, you can see a map of the precipitation versus the average for what we've seen um, usually over the last two months. Um, on the mountains and on the eastern plains, we have very good news, where some areas have seen up to 300% as much as the precipitation as usual. Here on the plains, though, and in Fort Collins, it's a different story. We've seen about a fourth of our usual precipitation. Hopefully, we'll be seeing some relief here pretty soon, though. It will not come tomorrow, though, as tomorrow will be fairly dry all day. If you take a look across Colorado, conditions will continue to be a little cooler. Uh, we'll see 48 in Fort Collins, 24 in Vail, 25 Gunnison, and 53 in Pueblo. Winds along the front range will be in around 25 miles an hour, keeping these temperatures slightly cooler than expected. In fact, there's a wind warming, a wind warning in Wyoming where temperatures could, or excuse me, winds could gust to above 60 miles an hour. As the week continues, we'll see a varied forecast. Winds, sun, snow, and warmth are all on their way. Let's take a look at your seven day forecast. Tomorrow will be very windy with a high of 49 and sunny skies. Thursday is Valentine's Day and we will see temperatures drop into the low 30s with a chance of snow. So you may want to consider bringing your Valentine's Day activities indoors. Friday, we'll see another slight chance of snow with partly sunny skies and a high of 36. We'll see a warm up into the weekend with highs in the 40s and 50s and sunny skies on Saturday and Sunday. As Monday rolls around, we'll see clouds return and temperatures go back down to the upper 30s. That's all the time I have for tonight. Tune in tomorrow morning for my Ramrise report. For CTV Weather, I'm Austin Harley. Back to you, Lena. Thanks, Austin. It's not uncommon to hear about high schoolers graduating at the age of 17, but that was certainly not the case of a current CSU PhD student who is graduating from her undergraduate program at the age of 17 instead. After breezing through homeschool, I started high school when I was nine years old. 18-year-old Crystal Vanderzanden graduated with her biochemistry degree from Doan College in Nebraska almost two years ago. So I'm a second year PhD student. Curiosity sparked her love of science. I think as a child, you have this sort of natural curiosity about the world and how things work. And now she's driven by research. It's also um, kind of cool to think that the research we're doing could be making an impact on the world. While applying to different grad schools, Crystal found a special place at CSU. I really like this department because we're, we're a small department and we're really um, tight-knit and collaborative and there's a strong sense of community here. And she hasn't given up since. It's sort of like running a marathon. You just kind of have to keep going at it. Uh, and you'll fail sometimes. Everybody does. But you just have to keep going. Despite her extensive studies, Crystal still believes she is just a regular teenager and enjoys to spend her free time watching movies, reading books, and teaching herself how to play the guitar. As CSU continually looks at its own campus smoking policy, CU Boulder is modifying theirs. CU Chancellor Phil DeStefano signed a new policy on February 6th mandating a no-smoking campus, which goes into effect in August. I headed down to Boulder to clear up some of the hazy details. The University of Colorado doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to smoking, but a new campus smoking ban is the university's latest effort to clean up their act. Uh, I am a huge supporter of it because, first of all, when you walk around campus and you see people smoking, they're not throwing their butts into the trash cans, they're throwing them onto the ground everywhere, into the streets, onto the fields, and it's really littering our campus and making it far less beautiful than it can be. But keeping the campus beautiful isn't the only thing that Ian likes about this new initiative. So, secondhand smoke causes not just lung disease, but mouth cancer, heart disease, throat cancer. And the fact that other people can just do that around you and give you cancer without you being able to stop it is just not fair. Even though over 1,100 different university campuses across the nation have enacted a smoking ban, there are still those who feel this policy is a drag. Some students here in Fort Collins are not as supportive of a ban closer to home. I mean, if, it depends on the limitations of it, you know, if there's certain areas that you can smoke in, it's perfect, but not being able to smoke anywhere on campus would be very inconvenient. 
I think designated smoking areas would be fair to the smokers. In my opinion, I would just have it banned completely, but I know that's not fair to everyone. But would an all-out ban motivate students like Michelle to quit smoking? I think so. I would say so. I'd say that I smoke the majority of cigarettes on campus because that's where I spend most of my day. In the meantime, CSU will have an opportunity to look at the example that CU will set in August. There will be no charges or fines for students caught smoking on the CU campus after August 19th, but they may be referred to the Office of Student Conduct. And after the break, we'll have a sports update with CTV sports anchor Sophie Vukovic. Stay tuned. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket. And it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. 43,000 CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. CSU is proud to announce the new Colorado State University Denver Center, where Ram alums will feel at home. It's a place to make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni, and even show your Ram pride with a wide selection of CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU, the CSU Denver Center at 17th and Glen Arm. Learn more at rams5280.colostate.edu. CSU men's basketball is generating a lot of talk on campus with all their success. I was just at Moby getting my ticket for the next game, and this is what I found. Hello. One of the perks of being a CSU student is free tickets to sporting events. However, this becomes a competition during the basketball season when there are more students wanting seats than seats available. Thank you. It's just one day before the big game against San Diego State University, and I'm at Moby's ticket booth. There's been a steady flow of people all day to get tickets, so if you want to grab your ticket, you better come in quickly. Tickets for tomorrow night's game are in particularly high demand for a couple of different reasons. Yeah, the first time we're ranked, we get to go uh, prove ourselves to the national audience Sorry. that we belong. I think, yeah. I think it's going to be nuts in there tomorrow. This is the first time we're ranked in 59 years, and it's the Orange Out, and it's SDSU, and they're third in the division, we're second in the division. So it's going to be a big game anyway. and being ranked just helps. I've just been informed they did open extra seating for students. However, there are still only 200 tickets left. So come by quickly with your student ID if you want to get a seat. Come to the game tomorrow night in Orange to cheer on the Rams to an expected win. Um, 68-62 Rams. I'm going to go 76-67 Rams. That was not long before they closed this evening, so you will want to get there first thing in the morning if you still want to get a ticket. See you at the game. For those of you that don't already know, today is Fat Tuesday. That's right, folks, Mardi Gras has begun. Here's a fun little fact. Mardi Gras is the French term for Fat Tuesday. The celebration originated from the practice of eating rich, fatty foods before the ritual fast of Lent. If you are looking for something to do around Fort Collins, the Bob Blue Theater Company will be hosting its annual Fat Tuesday fundraiser tonight, complete with Cajun-style food, costumes, music, and the Night of Dancing, located on the Hilton, south of Prospect. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. You can check out our website at ctv11news.com or follow us on Facebook or Twitter for more information. Have a great night.